Bay, yes. It's where the early explorers landed their ships and filled up their fresh water. Captain James Cook. Yeah. 1,000 people, give or take a few hundred, who live here. Some people commute to work to Hobart. Uh, there's a bit of farming, but it's mostly tourism here now, so it's what keeps people going. 10,000 people visiting the island in a single day. because the days are shorter we often see wallabies during the day because yeah they, are, they have to be out during the day in order to eat enough grass to sustain themselves in the cold so winter time is the best time to see wallabies on Bruni Island Black Ingus and um, wallab uh, so Bruni has a population of white wallabies that were introduced here about a hundred years ago. They're pretty rare, but sometimes you do see them. Yeah, one of the only places in the world where you can see white wallabies. White wallabies, okay. Well, that people come here to see are the little penguins. Oh yeah. Uh, and they're out. So we'll stay on the bus. I'll just um, hop out and get what we need. Keep going. Oysters. So these are Pacific oysters. They um, grow in um, crates in the waters here. And oysters are bivalve shells that filter feed. So they filter out particles in the water and that's what they, that's what they live off. They take about a year and a half to mature to the size most delicious oysters in the world. The waters around here are very clean, clear. These are the crates that they grow them in. What? 
satu setengah tahun sampai dia grow. Hmm? And we'd be very lucky to see a penguin here because they usually sleep at night and first light before the sun comes up they bottle out to sea and they fish all day and then they come back in the evenings. Sometimes we see black swans on the right hand side in the water here, so keep an eye out. Some oyster catches there, the sooty oyster catches, those birds. Yeah, sooty oyster catches I think, um, and then looks like some ducks maybe. Yeah, a few ducks. They were astonished because they've never seen a black swan before. They're usually white in Europe. It's a beautiful view down to South Bruni and Adventure Bay. The big cliffs called Fluted Cape. So on the on the way back, yeah, we'll go up to the lookout on the way back, and you'll take, you'll be able to have a better look here. It's beautiful. Oh, this is good. Picnic. Good. Yes. Do you need some help? Oh, that's okay. I need some. I need some help. Ah, ada, ada show. Ada show nggak jadi? Jangan, nanti api. Ini banyak air. Big wave. Big wave. Look at that wave. Ayo, ayo, ayo. Ayo, ayo. 
Meeting. Where are we? Brune Island. what we have here. Uh, we have cheese from the Bruni Island Cheese Company. Uh, so they make it here on the island, but the milk comes from the mainland, from, um, from mainland Tasmania, from the Huon Valley, just south of Hobart. There's no dairy industry here. The thing with their cheese is two things, very good and very expensive. <laughs> yeah, about $120 a kilo for each of these that we're gonna try. So the first one, uh, take one from one of these two rows. Um, so yeah, just grab yourselves on guys, right. just Feel from one of those two, yeah. Should be enough, one piece for everyone. That, that one's called the One Day Old, ODO. 
Mm. It's a fresh cheese One day and old. it's marinated in an oil to give it the flavour. It's very fresh, so yeah, there's it's quite a, you a young it? cheese, yeah. Yeah, so just one of those guys there. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> It's the year that the French landed here. It's matured on a Huon pine um, cutting. So this is a very rare timber, very rare tree. Only grows in Tasmania's southwest on the waterways. Um, it gives it, pass it around and give it a smell. Smell the wood. A very, yeah, so grab yourselves one of these guys. Huh? I think everyone's been distracted by the cheese. <laughs> that tree, the tree of that yeah, grows this timber gets to 4,000 years old. Yeah, and they build chips out of it because it doesn't rot in the water. Mm. And this cheese, it's a brie, it's a it's a brie. soft cheese, so it's a brie style. Mm. Mm. Um, it's um, what they do is every day they wash the rind with salt and brine, mm. and that encourages that um, kind of pink bacteria. Yeah, just pungent smell and taste. It's quite a strong cheese. This one. Yeah, I reckon this one's my favorite though. Yeah, very good cheese. Yeah. So just these guys here. Grab one of those. Yeah. Yeah. 1792. Now, if you guys really, if you really like one of the cheeses here today, then we can, you know, just let me know and we can stop on the way back. So this one's, the last one is a cheddar style hard cheese and it's the one that's won the awards. So a very famous cheese. It's the most expensive and it's a raw cheese. So made from raw milk. So the milk hasn't been pasteurized or treated in any way. So we see there's very stringent regulations that they have to do to make sure it's safe. Um, yeah, so it's won the World Cheese Awards. Grab yourselves a piece. That's the C2 they call it. C2, let us see, and then the number two. Yeah, so raw cheese. Okay. Absolutely delicious. Mm. 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 <laughs> 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 Being shocked, so they, they're kind of loose in their shell, so they move around. So I generally stab the toothpick into the abductor muscle. So not the creamy bit, but the see through bit. Mm -hmm. That's the muscle that holds the shell closed, yeah? And then, squeeze a bit of lemon. Oh. Yeah, just a little bit. And then, yeah, you can just scoop them out. Knead them like that. Oh. And then these guys just go back down. <laughs> um, I got three dozen, so there's enough for everyone to have two. Okay. Two dozen each? Two dozen each, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit hungry today. <laughs> yeah.